Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the second video in the W25Q Flash series, and today we will see how to read the data from the flash memory. In the previous video we saw how to reset the device, and how to read the device ID. Today we will read the data from the different locations in the flash memory. I have already stored the data at some specific locations in the memory, although we will cover the writing part in the next tutorial. Let's see the datasheet of the device. Here is the instruction to read the data. Let's quickly take a look at what we have covered so far. Here is the previous project. In the main file, we wrote the code to reset the chip and read the device ID. We defined these functions in the W25Q source file, and today we will add more functions to this file. I have modified the code from the previous project, and defined these SBI read and write functions. This will generalize this library, so that it can be used with any microcontroller that supports SBI. All you need to do is modify the SBI read and write functions according to the microcontroller you use. I will show this later with the AVR controller, after I cover the SBI peripheral in it. Anyway let's get back to the datasheet. The command to read the data is 3 hex. To send the command, we drive the pin low, send the read enable instruction, followed by the 24-bit memory address. After receiving the address, the device will start shifting the data out on the respective pin starting from the mentioned memory address. The data is sent in most significant byte first. After transmitting a data byte, the memory address is automatically incremented allowing a continuous stream of data to be transmitted. The transmission continues as long as the clock continues. Basically we can read an entire chip with very minimal effort, just by providing a single command. Here the timing diagram shows the same. We send the instruction to enable the read, followed by the 24-bit address. After receiving the address, the device starts pushing data out in byte format. So let's write a function to read the data. The start page where we want to start reading from. This is a 32-bit variable, because the number of pages is 256 times the number of blocks, so this number can be very high. The offset for the start page. The offset can range from 0 to 255. The size of the data we want to read. The size should be in bytes. And the pointer to the array to store the received data. The process to send the command remains the same. Let's define the tData array with 4 bytes. The first byte will be the read enable instruction, that is 3 hex. Now we need to send the 24-bit memory address. Let's calculate the address first. Here we will multiply the page address with 256, and add the offset with the result. This is because a page contains 256 bytes. So let's assume that I want to read from page 1, with an offset of 4. By using the calculation, we will get the memory address equal to 260. Page 0 contains the addresses from 0 to 255, so the address for page 1 will start from 256. Since the offset is 4, the memory address will be 260. This is the same that we got by using the formula. Now we have the 24-bit memory address, and we need to send it to the device. We will split the 24-bit address into 3 bytes, and store the most significant byte first. Since this is a general code that can be used throughout the Winbon flash memories, we also need to take care of the memories with larger sizes. I am using the 16 megabits memory, which has 32 blocks. Each block contains 16 sectors, and each sector contains 16 pages. There are 256 bytes in a single page, and that makes the device contain a total of 2 million bytes. This number is still within the limits of 24 bits we use for the addressing. 
But as we go higher in the memory size, the number of bytes exceeds the 24-bit size. For such devices, the memory address must be 32-bit wide. Let's define the T-data size as 5 bytes, so that it can be used in both situations. The memory address exceeds 24 bits for the memories with 512 blocks or more. So if the number of blocks is less than 512, we can use a 24-bit address. But if the number of blocks are 512 and more, we have to use the 32-bit address, and hence, the address will be split into 4 bytes. Now we will send the instruction along with the address. For the addresses within 24 bits, we send 4 bytes, and for the rest we send 5 bytes of command. Once the command is sent, we will read the data from the device. The received data will be stored in the iData array that we will pass to the read function. The size is also passed from the read function itself. After reading the data, pull the CS pin high. We will test it in a while. One important thing to note here is that the read instruction will be ignored if it is passed while the write or erase operation is going on. But we will take care of it when we will write the function to write or erase the chip. We don't need to worry about it here. Just like read instruction, there is a fast read instruction. This is similar to read instruction, except that it can operate at the highest possible frequency. To send the fast read command, we send the instruction, followed by the 24-bit address, followed by the dummy clock. Basically we don't send any data during the dummy clock. The process is similar to the read command, so we will just modify the read command. We need to send one extra byte here. The last command byte will be zero, so that the device can receive the dummy clock. The instruction to send the fast read is b-hex. Just increase the size by one in both cases. Let's define both the functions in the header file, so that we can call them in the main file. Let's write the main function now. We will check the ID before reading the data from it. I have stored the data to different locations in the memory. The first one is located on page 1, at an offset of 85. And the second one is on page 17, at an offset of 10. I intentionally stored them in different sectors, so as to demonstrate that the read command can read the entire sector without any additional effort. First we will read page 1 with the offset of 85. This is where the data is stored, so we should get the data in the beginning of the Rx buffer itself. Define the Rx buffer array. Now let's read the 512 bytes from the beginning. We will read the data from the second location, which is stored on page 1 at the offset of 10. Let's also read 512 bytes, starting from page 16. We will fast read the 512 bytes data, just to test the command. Let's build and debug the code. I have added the Rx data to the live expression. Let's add a breakpoint before reading any data. Alright we have hit the breakpoint, so step over the function to read the data from the memory. The data is stored at the beginning of the Rx buffer. Here you can see the data, hello world. We read 20 bytes, so the rest 9 bytes are ff hex. The next statement reads the chip from the beginning. Since the data is stored 1 page 1 at an offset of 85, the address from the start will be 341. So we should get the data at 341st byte. Here you can see the data, hello world.
Now we will read the data at the second location, which is on page 17 at an offset of 10. Here we have received the data. The position of this data from the start of the 16th page will be 266. Here we have got the data at the 266th position. We can also see the data in the memory region. Hover on the Rx data, and copy its memory address. Now in the memory tab, paste the address, or just enter it manually. Let me reset the debugger and run again. Here you can see the data at the beginning of the memory. And now the data is at an offset. Note that this is the memory map of Rx data, and not the device, so the data in here is how it is stored in the Rx data array. So we are able to read the data stored in the device memory. Now let's do a final read, where we will read more than one sector in Since the second set of data is stored on page 17, we need to read a total of 17 pages, that means a total of 4608 bytes. Let me modify the Rx data to store these many bytes, and read 4608 bytes of data from the start of the memory. The first set of data should be available at the position 341. Here you can see it. And the second set of data should be available at the address 4362nd byte from the beginning. Here you can see the second set. So we were able to read the data starting from a particular location, or starting from a particular page, or even starting from the beginning of the memory. This is all we need to know for the read operation. The write operation is going to be complicated, as we can't write more than 256 bytes in a single operation. We will cover it in the next video. This is it for today. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.